If you want to follow along with me, I'm going to read one verse. I can probably quote this verse from Romans 6.23. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. 1 Kings chapter 21. This is a famous title, a famous sermon that was preached by a man that was born in 1889. He was a direct descendant of Robert E. Lee. His name was Robert G. Lee. He, he preached it thousands of times and preached it his last time at almost 100 years old in 1978. And I borrowed his title and some thoughts from him. It's a message that everybody in America and across this world needs to hear. It's a message that you don't hear much about anymore. We hear so much, you know, positive things and so many things on the, you know, the side of God's a God of love and God of mercy and the God of grace, and he is that. But there's another side to God. God has two sides to his coin. God is also a God of judgment and a, and a God of wrath and a God that doesn't acquit the guilty if they don't repent and don't put their sins under the blood there's coming a payday someday. And the Bible says that Romans 6 and 23, for the wages of sin is death, or the payment for sin is eternal damnation, is what it's saying. I want to share, I heard a good Irish friend of mine named Kevin Purcell. He has a house on the border of Northern Ireland and Southern Ireland in the free state. And he has a fish in his driveway. Kevin may get this CD sometime, but... I hope to get him over here to preach sometime, a tremendous preacher. And he was sharing how that he worked for a boss his whole entire life that he had never met. And he went on to say that many people, you know, McDonald's, they've never met the owner. They don't really know the boss. Many people in big corporations don't know the boss. And many people don't realize that when they're not serving the Lord, they're serving a boss they've never met. But there'll come a time and they're earning a wage. That wage is being put up for them. There's coming a payday someday. For those that store their treasures up in heaven, they're going to receive crowns and mansions and eternal bliss. But for those that are not serving God, who have refused to bow their knees to Christ, and those that have rejected his commandments, and those that choose to go their own way, there is also coming a payday for the wages of sin is eternal damnation, saith the Lord. Give him a hand clap of praise in Jesus' name. I want to read some scripture to you in our text, uh, 1 Kings 21. I'm not going to preach a sermonette this morning. I didn't come to preach a sermonette because I said before, sermonettes begat Christianettes. And we need the full counsel of God. We need the grace and the mercy and the love and the peace and the joy. And we need the judgment of God also. We need it all so that we can be a balanced Christian. So 1 Kings chapter 21, and we'll read just a bit here to get the, the idea of the message. And it came to pass after these things that Naboth, the Jezreelite, had a vineyard, which was in Jezreel, hard by the palace of Ahab, king of Samaria. And Ahab spake unto Naboth, saying, Give me thy vineyard, that I may have it for a garden of herbs, because it is near unto my house. And I will give, it, give thee a better vineyard for it, or if it seem good to thee, I will give thee the worth of it in money. And Naboth said to Ahab, The Lord forbid it me, that I should give the inheritance of my fathers unto thee. And Ahab came in his house heavy displeased, because of the word with Naboth the Jezreelite had spoken to him, for he had said, I will not give thee the inheritance of my fathers. And he had laid him down upon his bed and turned away his face and would eat no bread. But Jezebel, his wife, came and said unto him, Why is thy spirit so sad that thou eatest no bread? And he said unto her, Because I spake unto Naboth the Jezreelite and said unto him, Give me thy vineyard for money, or else if it please thee, I will give thee another vineyard for it. And he answered, I will not give thee my vineyard. And Jezebel, his wife, said unto him, Dost thou now govern the kingdom of Israel, and arise, and eat bread, and let thine heart be merry, and I will give thee the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite. 
And she wrote letters in Ahab's name and sealed them with a seal and sent the letters unto the elders and to the nobles that were in the city dwelling with Naboth. And she write in the letters saying, Proclaim a fast and set Naboth on high among the people and set two men, the sons of Belial, before him to bear witness against him saying, He did blaspheme God and the king, then carry him out and stone him that he may die. And the men of his city, even the elders and the nobles, where the inhabitants in the city did as Jezebel had sent unto them. And as it was written in the letters which she had sent unto them, they proclaimed a fast, set Naboth on high among the people. And there came in two children of Belial, or of the devil, and sat before him. And the men of Belial witnessed against him, even against Naboth, in the presence of the people, saying, Naboth did blaspheme God and the king. Then they carried him forth out of the city and stoned him with stones that he died. Then they sent to Jezebel saying, Naboth is stoned and is dead. And it came to pass when Jezebel heard it that Naboth was stoned and was dead. That Jezebel said to Ahab, Arise, take possession of thy vineyard of Naboth, the Jezreelite, which he refused to give thee for money, for Naboth is not alive but dead. And it came to pass when Ahab heard that Naboth was dead, that Ahab rose up to go down to the vineyard of Naboth, the Jezreelite to take possession of it. And the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite, saying, Arise and go down to meet Ahab, king of Israel, which is in Samaria. Behold, he is in the vineyard of Naboth, whither he has gone down to possess it. And thou shalt speak unto him, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Hast thou killed and also take possession? And thou shalt speak unto him, saying, Thus saith the Lord, In the place where dogs lick the blood of Naboth, shall dogs lick thy blood, even thine? And Ahab said to Elijah, Hast thou found me, O mine enemy? And he answered, I have found thee, because thou hast sold thyself to work evil in the sight of the Lord. Behold, I will bring evil upon thee, and take away thy posterity, and will cut off from Ahab him that muttereth against the wall, and him that shut up and left in Israel, and will make thine house like house of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, like the house of Basha, the sons of Ahab, and for the provocation wherewith thou hast provoked me to anger and made Israel to sin. And Jezebel also spake the Lord, saying, The dogs shall eat Jezebel by the wall of Jezreel. And him that dieth of Abab in the city, the dogs shall eat. And him that dieth in the field, the fowls of the air shall eat. Would you pray with me? Father, I pray this morning, God, I bind every force of darkness every evil spirit that would try to hinder, that would try to draw attention away. I pray, God, every mind into captivity to the word of God. I pray, God, everyone that's stubborn, those that are rebellious, those that are pretenders, God, those that are just going through the motions, those, Father, that are backslid, those that have never been born again will be saved today, Lord, will be changed today, transformed by your spirit and, God, by your precious blood. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, Amen. I want to introduce some characters in our story this morning to you that you'll understand the message. Naboth, firstly, I'd like to introduce Naboth to you, a God-fearing Israelite, a man who lived in a town called Jezreel, who had a little vineyard alongside the summer palace of wicked King Ahab. A man that loved his vineyard so much, it was his inheritance from his ancestors, that he wouldn't part with it for nothing. He loved this thing because it was handed down from generation to generation, and he loved the Lord with all of his heart. I want to introduce to you, secondly, Ahab, the vilest toad that ever squatted on the throne of Israel, King Ahab. I want you to know he's the worst of the Israelite kings, King Ahab. He commanded nations, he commanded the wealth of the nation, he commanded the people of the nation, but he had no command over his own lust and over his own flesh. Here we see a man that was lived under the thumb of Jezebel, the wickedest woman the Bible has ever described. He lived under her authority, under her thumb, Queen Jezebel. I want to introduce to you Queen Jezebel daughter of Ethabal, king of Tyre, the wife of Ahab, the epitome of an evil woman, according to God's word. A woman that was more reckless and more ignorant and more wicked than her husband, the most evil king that ever squatted on the throne 
of Israel. Here we see a woman that was that worshiped Baal and opposed everyone that wouldn't worship Baal. She would have them put to death, even the death of the prophets. We see a woman that was so evil that her beauty was beyond compare, but yet in all, her, she was like a viper coiled up, ready to strike at any moment. I want to introduce number four character to you this morning, Elijah, the prophet, the man of God, the man that came, the Bible says, a tishbite, the man that came when thousands walked away from God in a time when everybody was fleeing from Jehovah and worshiping Baal. He stood like a granite wall against the evil forces of darkness. He stood like a granite wall against the prophets of Baal. He stood by himself on Mount Carmel and called a showdown against the prophets of Baal, called down fire from heaven, consumed the sacrifice, and slew the 450 prophets of Baal by himself, a man of God. Can you say amen in the mighty name of Jesus? A rough man. A man clothed in rough attire, ate rough food, but a man that had the heartbeat of God. A man that was so in tune with God he could pray and stop the rain for three and a half years. Pray once more and cause it to rain. A man that was so in tune with God he could call down fire from heaven. A man that was so in tune from God he could call bears out of the woods to attack rebellious children and devour them. We're talking about a man of mighty miracles. And this man was the man that had to deal with these wicked king and queen. I want us to look here this morning. Firstly, we have a lot to cover, but I want to cover this this morning. Firstly, the real estate request. First Kings, Ahab in verse 1. I want to go through this. In verse 2, he spake unto Naboth, saying, Give me thy vineyard that I may have it for a garden of herbs because it is near my house. I will give thee for better vineyard or money, whatever you want. Now it sounds reasonable. He says, listen, Naboth, my summer palace is near your vineyard. I want your vineyard. I'll buy it from you. Sounds reasonable, doesn't it? I'll buy it from you. I'll buy you another vineyard. I'll swap you another vineyard for this one. Now that sounds pretty good. Now, what kind of fortitude did Naboth have? What kind, of, what kind of man was Naboth to look at knowing this is the wickedest king that ever sat on the throne and his vineyard touches the palace and he comes wanting this and he knows what can be the outcome. But let me tell you something. He wouldn't give up this vineyard. Now, Naboth, here we find that wicked Ahab had everything. His palace was known to be inlaid with ivory, the summer palace. He had servants waiting on his every whim. He could have the finest of foods. He had the finest of chariots overlaid with gold, the best horses to pull them, the money he could buy. He had women beyond women, anything he wanted. He had money, power. He had prestige. But yet in all, he had a hunger for more land. He wanted what didn't belong to him. And let me tell you, the Bible says in Deuteronomy 19.14, move not the ancient landmarks. But I want you to see something here. They were told, I want to show you a scripture. Leviticus 25 and 23. Look at this with me. Leviticus 25 and 23. Ahab well knew this commandment. We're going to get back to 1 Kings 21, but I want you to look at this with me. Leviticus 25 and 23. The land shall not be sold forever. The land is mine, for you are strangers and sojourners with me. Now, I want you to see here. Other scripture I can show you, Numbers 36, 7 through 9, tells them, never sell this land out of your tribe. This land has, was given by inheritance. Don't ever sell it. He said, you're not allowed to sell this land. God gave them a command. And Naboth, being a godly man, said, I cannot sell this land. I cannot swap another piece for this land. This was the commandment. He said, Far be it from me. He said, the Lord forbids me to do this. And so Naboth go, uh, rather, Ahab goes back to his palace. And he's pouting. Now we find the pouting king. And he puts his face toward the wall and he gets in his bed and isn't even uh, time for bed. And he refuses to eat and word gets to Jezebel. 
And Jezebel comes to him and says, hey, why won't you eat? What are you doing in bed? It's the middle of the day. And he starts to pout to her and he starts to sulk like a child to her. He says, I went to uh, Naboth and I tried to buy his vineyard and even offered to buy him another vineyard, even better vineyard. And he refused me. And he said, uh, he was heavy hearted, the Bible says. He was depressed because he couldn't have everything he wanted. Let me tell you something. If God gave us everything we wanted, we'd get ourselves in a lot of trouble. Sometimes we're better off when God shuts the door. Don't kick it down, but say, yes, Lord, that's your will for my life. Can you say amen? Anytime God ever shut the door on me and I forcefully, because I'm a bullheaded man, kicked it down and made it happen, I always paid for it. I always was sorry I got involved. But let me tell you something. Here we see the pouting king. And Jezebel, she said, listen, don't worry, the wicked wife. We'll get you, I'll get you this vineyard. Jezebel hears news, she comes to him, I'll get you the vineyard. I want to tell you something. She, she says, I'll get you the vineyard. I want you to know something this morning. Jezebel was about to unhatch an evil plan. You hear me this morning? God sees every evil plan. God knows every evil thought. God knows every bit of gossip. God knows everybody behind the scene trying to do damage. And God knows those that would try to damage you. And God's got everything under control. He's not asleep. Can you say amen in the mighty name of God? Give him a hand clap of praise. She wrote letters, and she wrote them to the elders of the city, and Naboth sealed them with his ring. Not Naboth, Ahab, her king, sealed them with his ring. Sent out letters to the elders of the city. Said, put Naboth on high, make a parade, proclaim a fast. Made it sound religious. We know that uh, Naboth will not refuse a religious event. Call it a fast. Put him on high. And then get two wicked men to lie false witness against him that he blasphemed God and the king. And then take him out of the walls of the city and stone him to death. I want you to know something. They thought they were going to get away with this. I want you to know the Bible says in Numbers uh, 23 and 32, be sure you know your sin will find you out. It says, whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. The eyes of the Lord go to and fro throughout the earth and he sees everything. And you think you're getting away with something, friend? You better think again because God keeps good records and God knows everything that's going on. Can you say amen in Jesus' name? She sent out the letter. They killed poor Naboth. And according to custom, they killed all of his family. See, because when the family was dead and when the, the name was killed off, the land would revert back to the government. Much like this country. If you had nobody to take the land, no, no family, next of kin, nothing, the government takes it. And so he would receive this vineyard that he wanted. And now because they take them all out and kill them, news comes to King Ahab. Naboth is dead. I can imagine Jezebel smiling. Naboth is dead. Oh, happy as a lark she was. He's dead now. Go inherit your vineyard. He tells Jehu, his chariot rider, who was famous for fast chariot riding, Get my horses and chariot ready. We're going to Jezreel, 20 miles away. Off they go, as fast as they can go, they get there. Ahab gets out of the chariot, walks into the vineyard, thinks, man, this is nice, and I can imagine. Go with me for a minute. He sees the footprints of Naboth in the vineyard that he loved. He sees smaller footprints in the dirt and sand of his wife that would help him in there. He sees other little footprints of children, sons, and maybe grandchildren. The blood of Naboth is still wet on the ground where they took him out of the city and they bashed his brains in with stones and they caved his head in and killed him out there for doing absolutely nothing. 
And here Ahab hops out of the chariot. He walks into the vineyard. And when he walks into the vineyard, he's looking all around. It's a, it's a great vineyard. And he's wondering, man, I can do away with this part of the vineyard and plant my, he wanted to plant a garden. I can plant all my garden, all my tomatoes and all my, all my vegetables and everything that I want to do away with this vineyard. And we see here that he walks in there. He probably looks and sees a little chair where, where Naboth would rest after a while. He maybe sees a watering hole where he'd go get a drink of water in the heat of the day. And as he's walking along, all of a sudden, he looks out of the corner of his eye and sees a flash of a shadow. You ever do that? You ever look? I know I've seen angels like that. I've looked like that and seen things go by. I said, thank you, Lord. The angels of the Lord and camp round about them that love him. You ever look out of the corner of your eye and see something flash by? And he looks and he sees a shadow. And what is it? Is it a ravenous beast? Is it a tornado from God? Is it a flood? Is it a hailstorm? Is it a fire from heaven? No, it's none other than the prophet of God, Elijah. And God said, Elijah, go down to Naboth's vineyard. You got to meet with King Ahab and you got to tell him, thus saith the Lord. Can you say amen in the mighty name of Jesus Christ? He sees him and the prophet says, you not only killed this man, an innocent man, but you also took possession of his land. Let me tell you something. People write letters to try and discredit people. You know, people will try to tear you down. It's sad, you know. You think everybody's happy when you start getting blessed? Come on now. You got a few quid. Man, you got your little vineyard. You're doing all right, man. You think everybody's your friend. Everybody ain't your friend. There's people writing letters. There's people ain't happy with you. You're being blessed. Let me tell you, God's happy, and maybe your family's happy, and you're happy. But there's people out there like Jezebel that would write letters, people out there that would spread gossip, people out there that would try to discredit you and try to tear you down. But I've come to tell those people this morning, the gates of hell will not prevail against the church of the living God. Can you say amen? If God be for us, who can be against us? God sees all and knows all. And God is a just God and he takes care of his people. Can you say amen in the mighty name of Jesus? Elijah comes with a death warrant. He says, Ahab, guess what? You're going to die. And he said, your wife, oh, he, went, he thought it was over with. Oh, he said more like, incidentally, God's got a word for Jezebel too. He said, the dogs are going to eat her by the wall of Jezreel. You talk about being, you know these prophecies that are so general, thus saith the Lord, I will bless thee. I hope so. You know what I mean? I'm a child of God. I'm already blessed. Can you say amen? But here, Elijah had a specific word. He said, she's going to get et by the dogs at the wall of Jezreel. And you're going to die. And he said, the dogs are going to lick up your blood. Let me tell you something. Payday comes to those. Let me tell you, they think that it's all over with. Here we find Ahab and Jezebel. Years go by. They think nothing's ever going to happen. They think God, the hound of heaven, has lost their trail. He thinks that God isn't going to punish them, that maybe Elijah missed out, that Elijah missed God. Years go by and nothing's happening. But all of a sudden, one day, and I can imagine that she would go to her house of prayer to Baal, to the devil, and pray against the hound of heaven against the judgment of God, against Elijah's prophecy. But little did she know there is no other God but our God. And let me tell you, one day the Bible says that Jehoshaphat came to King Ahab and said, we gotta go to war. We have to join forces and go to war. So Ahab said, I'm gonna dress like a regular soldier, take my kingly garments off. They won't know me because this other king wants my life anyway. And the other king had sent a word out to all of his men, kill King Ahab. He's the one I want dead. And he's in regular army clothes. They usually wore the royal apparel and they rode in a special chariot. But he's out there in disguise. 
And of all the people there, an arrow found its way into his back between his shields of the breastplate and sunk deep into him. And the Bible says that the blood run out on the chariot. And when they took the chariot to the pool to wash it out, it said the dogs licked up the blood of Ahab. Let me tell you something. God knows exactly what he's doing. And nobody gets away with nothing. God sees everything. Can you say amen? God sees, listen, young people, he sees you destructing the church. God sees you. God sees those taking dope in the parking lot. God sees the thieves out to work, done behind closed doors, no one sees, but God sees. God sees you, ma'am and sir, that's mean to your kids and slap them around. God sees you. You may not be a murderer, but God sees you. God sees you, gossiper, and those that try to go about discrediting people, those that go about to tear people down and run your mouth, your day will come. Whatever a man sows, that will he also reap. Pay day someday. Can you say amen? God sees you, sipping saint. Polish a few off and no one will ever know the difference. Sneaky pot smoker, God sees you. Come on, pill popper, God knows all about it. Your day will come. You may fool Ham Parker. I'm just a messenger boy. But payday isn't always on Friday. And payday isn't always a good thing. One of these days, God's going to roll back the curtains and God's going to expose everything for what it is. And let me tell you, those that listen... Stand before God with unclean hands. Stand before God with unrepented sin. Stand before God week after week. Some never learn their lesson. They get punished. They get beat to a pulp by God. They get sent places they'd rather not be. But yet in all, they never heed the word of God. And God has sent me with a word from his throne. Thus saith the Lord, pay day someday. He better cry out and repent in the name of Jesus Christ. Three years later, Ahab got his. But Jezebel, what happened to her? 20 years go by. 20 years. Can you imagine God keeping up with this carry on for 20 years? And you're thinking, God, you've forgotten this deal. And you're on the God of mercy and grace side now. He's on the grace and mercy. Oh, hallelujah. He's loving and kind, yeah, and he's judgment, and he's a God of wrath, and he's a God that will bring down heavy judgments on people that know better, that won't repent. The children of Israel knew better. They were the apple of God's eye. They were raised under his presence. They was raised with the word of God. They was raised with the greatest prophets the world has ever heard speak. But yet in all, they ran to Baal. They ran to do things wrong. Today is a day of repentance right now as the accepted time. Call upon the Lord while he is near. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Payday is coming. It may not be the rapture. It could be your own individual payday. You're not promised tomorrow. Young people pass away every day. Young, middle-aged, older ones, it doesn't matter. Romans 6.23 says, for the wages of sin is death. You know, I told people about this story many years ago. There was a pastor that was pastoring in New Orleans and he preached on the radio and all across the world for that matter. And the guy followed him and he would continually call in and harass him. He said, I'm the chief of the kangaroo court. He wouldn't identify himself. He would speak blasphemy against God and horrible things to the man of God. He would just say, I'm the chief of the kangaroo court. This went on for years and one day the pastor got a phone call and there was a woman in the hospital. She said, there's a young man here that's dying. He's 20 years old. He probably won't make the night. She said, but he only identifies himself as a chief of the kangaroo court. She said, you would know who he was. He wants to know where you come. And he said, yes, I'm going to come. 
And he went to that place and he said, when I walked in that hospital room, they had isolated him. He spoke like a ravenous beast. His voice was like a wolf, more than a man. He spoke terrible things to the preacher. And then in a moment of sanity, he said, preacher, you're the only preacher I ever listened to. You're the only one I ever heard speak. You go across this world speaking for Jesus. He said, I've got a message. You go to young people, and I want you to tell these young people, wherever you go, preacher, please tell them from me. He said, I can't do anything. I've sold my soul to the devil. He said, the only thing you can do for me is when I die, take me out in the parking lot and let the vultures eat this foul body if they would like. But he said, tell them. He said, I serve the devil. Tell them I work for the devil. Tell them I'm dying as a result of a life I've lived. But he said, tell them one thing for me, preacher. The devil pays in counterfeit money. The devil doesn't pay like he said he's going to pay. Preacher said he held that man's hand. He said, as death drawed near, he tried to lead him to the Lord. He didn't want nothing to do with God. As death drawed near, he squeezed his hand for the last time. And he said, he expired. And the woman nurse said, you should have never touched that man. She said, come, quick, let me wash your hands with uh, disinfectant. She said, that man was a bad man. But let me tell you something. Payday is coming. It's not enough to come and play church. You know, when my kids were small, they played church. I remember when Al was a little baby boy, he told me one time, he said, I dreamed of myself preaching in that pulpit, Dad. I said, you'll preach in that pulpit someday, son. And I tell you, my kids played church, and I know some of them probably preached, and some of them maybe baptized, other maybe they baptized the dogs and cats, I don't know. But I want you to know, kids do things like that, and that's okay for kids. But friends, we're not supposed to be playing church. It's time to get right with God. It's time to repent of our sin. It's time to put it under the blood. It's time to learn our lesson. Let me tell you something. You think it isn't going to happen. Listen, Ecclesiastic says, because the sentence against an evil man is not carried out quickly, the hearts of them that are evil are set to do evil. In other words, because they don't get judged quick, they think they're not getting judged at all. But let me tell you something. Judgment day is coming. Payday is coming. David thought he got away with it when he took Bathsheba, took her to himself, a beautiful woman bathing one night, wasn't bothering nobody. He took her. He sent her husband to the heat of the battle, had Uzziah killed. He thought it was over with. He killed the husband. He took Bathsheba. He was raising her son. And all of a sudden, one day, the prophet came. And the prophet said, hey, I got to ask you something, King David. He said, go ahead, ask away. He said, there's a man that had sheep by the hundreds, flocks of sheep. And he said, his neighbor had one sheep. And he said, that man that had all those flocks had guests come by for dinner off the road. He said, and he said, he went to that one neighbor, had one sheep, and he killed that sheep. And he said, that neighbor would pet that sheep, and it sat on his lap, and he fed it out of his hand. It was like a child to him. And he said, he killed that one sheep, all that the man had. And he said he never touched his own flock. He said, what should be done to this man, King David? David said, he shall surely die. And Naaman said, thou art the man. He said, you have everything. He said, Uzziah had one wife. You had it all. He thought he was away with it. He thought it was done and over. He thought he had it buried. Let me tell you, wicked Haman in Esther's story built the gallows for Mordecai, a man of God, 75 feet tall. He thought he would kill him on the gallows and he hung on his own gallows by the king's decree. Let me tell you something, friends, you think you get away with things, but you get away with nothing in this life. Payday is coming. It's time to get right with God. Can you say amen in the mighty name of Jesus? Proverbs 26 says in 27, he that diggeth the pit shall fall therein himself. Hosea says, they have sown the wind, they shall reap the whirlwind. It says, whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. This morning I want to encourage you. You won't hear much preaching like this. This is the kind of preaching 
The Bible says, because of the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. When Elijah showed up with piercing eyes and rough voice, anointed by God, I can picture old King Ahab's knees start knocking. That beautiful vineyard that was so lit up, all of a sudden it turned black. He said, what have I done? But I want to tell you something. There's one way to cancel out that evil payday, and that's to accept a good payday. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The only way to stop the seeds we have sown, the only way to stop the evil we have done is to cry out to God, repent of our sins, turn from our wicked ways, and God said he'll take our sin and place it as far as the east as from the west, never to be brought up against us again. Can you say amen in the mighty name of Jesus Christ? Stand with me all over this place this morning. I want men or women this morning and I'll say, you know what, Brother Ham, there's things in my life that shouldn't be there. That I'm doing things I shouldn't be doing. I'm saying things I shouldn't be saying. I'm living contrary to what I should be. I want you to come this morning, get out of your seat, and I want you, don't let the devil stop you. Don't let pride stop you. Don't worry about what everybody else thinks because you gotta stand before God alone. No one else will stand with you, but God will judge you by yourself. Come this morning and say, I wanna put things right with God. I wanna put it under the blood. I want God's forgiveness. Come on, from all over, there's more this morning. Be a man or a woman about it. Say, I need to put some things under the blood, preacher. I need to ask God to forgive me. I don't want to stand on that day and be paid my wages for sin, but I want to hear the, the voice of God say, welcome, good and faithful servant. Come in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, there's others this morning. Be a man about it. Be a woman about it. If you're backslid, come this morning. If you've been doing things wrong, come this morning. If you've been living contrary, working wrong, come this morning. Today is the day of salvation. Today you get another chance to put it right. Come on, there's others. Say, yes, Lord. I need a change in my life. As Jimmy plays, just begin to pray in your own way and we'll pray together in a minute. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Service is near and now. Choir is singing just as I am. That old song is playing. Yes, People at the altar kneeling down to pray. Some are pleading mercy, forgiveness for their sins. Some are fighting battles, which are struggling to win. The time has come to give it to the Lord. Come on, come to don't don't walk out. Reverence the Lord. The song Reverence the Lord this morning. Born. Let's keep it quiet in here. That's what this altar is for. You don't have to carry your burdens anymore. I want you to pray There's with me this morning. Everybody in here, I want you to pray with me this morning. Those that are down front, say, Dear Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Show me anything, Lord, and everything. That's not like you. Replace it with love. Replace it with joy. Replace it with forgiveness. Take away criticism. Fill my heart with love. Forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. And I'll live for you from this day on with all my heart. In Jesus' name, amen. If you need special prayer, I'll be glad to pray for you. Otherwise, you're dismissed in the name of Jesus.